Good morning, my creative friends. This is Dr. Manette Riordan, and this is Painting in Your PJs live with Manette, where I am down here in my studio, bright and early at 7 a.m. Mountain Time, Monday to Thursday, talking about all things life, love, art, and using visual journaling and art journaling as a way of self-exploration, of introspection, and I'm always looking for that curious way in. How do we find inspiration for a page? What's the thing, the one mark, the dot, or the word that can get us started? And so what I wanted to share with you today is a beautiful, beautiful poem by one of my favorite poets, John O'Donohue, who was uh, an Irish priest, philosopher, and poet, who he is now deceased. But his writings always really strike something in my heart. And so I was cleaning off my desk yesterday, and I came across a printout of one of his poems that I must have used in a class somewhere along the way. And so I want to share this poem with you and then show you how I might incorporate this poem into a visual journaling page. So I hope you'll join me for the journey. Grab a journal or a piece of mixed media paper, some of your favorite colors of acrylic paint, and let's dive right in and look at how this poem can serve as a starting place for a page, but also as that starting place to just take me within on my own personal journey to the just core of myself to figure out where it is. Good morning, Judy. Where in good morning from Diego as well. To have that like one line or that prompt that's going to allow me to just get a little bit closer to where I'm at and what I'm thinking about uh, today as I wake up here this morning. So I'm going to go ahead and switch my camera here. So for those of you that you know like to to see the words or read along you can, although that may be a little hard to read. But this is For a New Beginning by John O'Donohue. In out-of-the-way places of the heart, where your thoughts never think to wander, this beginning has been quietly forming, waiting until you are ready to emerge. For a long time it has watched your desire, feeling the emptiness growing inside you. Noticing how you willed yourself on, still unable to leave what you had outgrown. It watched you play with the seduction of safety and the gray promises that sameness whispered. Heard the waves of turmoil rise and relent. Wondered, would you always live like this? Then the delight, when your courage kindled and out you stepped onto new ground, your eyes young again with energy and dream, a path of plenitude opening before you. Though your destination is not yet clear, you can trust the promise of this opening. Unfurl yourself into the grace of beginning that is at one with your life's desire. Awaken your spirit to adventure. Hold nothing back. Learn to find ease in risk. Soon you will be home in a new rhythm, for your soul senses the world that awaits you. John O'Donohue. So I love so much about this poem and the imagery of the poem, and it feels extra appropriate right now in March as we're on the edge of spring in many places, at least in the northern hemisphere. It's also a new moon today or tomorrow, and new moon energy is always about planting seeds and beginnings. And I really love the line about, though your destination is not, like, not yet clear, you can trust the promise of this opening. You can trust the promise of this opening. Unfurl yourself into the grace of beginning that, that is at one with your life's desire. And I've been feeling like there's a lot brewing and stewing. There's a lot that's quietly forming in the background of my life and my business. And so I want to kind of capture, and I'm going to do an abstract again, similar to I, that I did yesterday. And I want to keep this, a copy of this poem, 
in my journal as well. So we'll be really looking at how to do some of all of that. All right, Mr. Diego, off you go, buddy. But I want to kind of work in that same way that I did with this just abstract energetic play of color. But today, rather than growth, it's about the path and the emerging. Now I have cat hair all over my, my plate. And it's so interesting because, like I said, I was cleaning off my desk yesterday and there were all these things about follow your own path. We're traveling along different paths in our lives. And also um, a tag off a teacup. I always keep these. Many paths lead to the same destination. It doesn't matter how you get there. And so this theme of walking a path is really emerging. So I want to just explore that in abstract painting and see where I get to today. And I'm also just super, super drawn to this woman. There's something here about, you know, her beauty, her confidence. She's an older woman. There's a lot of wisdom. There's a lot of elegance here. But there's something about this picture that really draws me that might somehow get incorporated into this spread as well. And again, I'm just sort of sifting and sorting through the different things that are on my desk. And that's how sometimes I find my best inspiration. But I often find my best inspiration through poetry. So this again is For a New Beginning by John O'Donohue. And I'm sure you can find a copy of this in uh, a lot of places online. Poetry.org is a great place for really sort of capturing um, or for finding words to a lot of different poems. And I'm going to come back and start with a darker color today. Yesterday I worked on a background of black gesso and today I'm feeling like I want to maybe start with this gorgeous Payne's Gray just because it's sitting on my desk here and I just put it right on the page and I'm going to come in and just I'm thinking about that theme of path right that theme of path and how can I sort of abstractly just represent that idea of flowing and following along a path and I'm just going to start to layer up paint. And again, this may get covered up, or I'm going to figure out some kind of fun way to attach this into the journal. If I reduce the size of the print, it would probably fit on a tag, which might be a fun way to do it. Um, I gessoed this page. I also glued it to the page before. And so I'm feeling like I'm just trusting my process, right? Because there's never this sort of, you know, straight and even path, but there seems to always be this kind of spiraling in along the journey, lots of detours, lots of movement. And also when we think about new beginnings and seeds that have been planted. And I love the bluey gray of this color. It feels maybe a little bit moody, a little bit earthy. And I think it's so important to just find our way onto a page in a different way every time, right? Like a lot of times I love to start with writing, which I haven't done recently. I can get caught up in making the same marks over and over, and so sometimes I think it's important to come in and vary the marks and the brushes. And sometimes the page can be really simple, really simple. But there's something, again, about, you know, there's the elements of the path here, but there's a lot of movement happening. Get my water open here. I'm sort of feeling drawn to this. I have this little leaf here that I made out of paper clay for a, a class I taught last year. It's getting kind of full in paint. And I found that 
you can make your own stamps with paper clay and these and they make great shapes so what if I bring some of these leaves in around the edge of my path and see what I can create and I just sort of randomly chose this is a phthalo green yellow shade grab a makeup sponge here Again, I tend to chop the ends off of these so that I can reuse them until they get down to their little nubby bits. And this one is definitely getting down to its little nubby bits. So this is probably going to get more paint on me than anything else. We'll see if this still has any life in it to get some of those shapes. Yeah, not too bad. And when I think about walking a path, my favorite path to walk are often in nature and in the woods, which then always makes me think about the poet Mary Oliver, who wrote so much about nature. And this leaf is something that I shared in my found objects class about, and found objects was using things you find outside and things you find around the house to make your own mark in your pages. I had so much fun creating that class. The link is in the comments below. It's funny, painting with a brush is a much faster process and I can uh, just really, you know, keep a page moving and flowing but coming in with this little tiny stamp, I'm noticing a little bit of impatience, a little bit of, oh, could this just please go a little bit faster? But then if I just pause and remember, why do I make these abstract pages? Why am I here on this journey? And it's for the quiet and the introspection. And if I just allow myself to slow down and to breathe, And to not feel rushed, to remember I have plenty of time. I'm not going anywhere. So loving that just again, following the, the rhythm and the lines of the path. And now my green leaf looks even prettier because I have all this dark green paint. I've also taken this paper clay and really... Um, and maybe I'll show this on the video tomorrow, just some play with paper clay. I've been wanting to paper clay, play with it again. But I have stitched these or glued them onto pages to create texture in pages. And I'm kind of digging this green. So maybe there is maybe a bit of a forest path around the edges. And I've tucked some moose print under the pages of this book so I can get right up to those edges without getting too much paint on the rest of the book and sticking pages together. And just these colors are starting to inspire the palette and to think about where I want to go next. And I'm just, again, 100% following my intuition. And I picked up a book I had started a while ago this morning called Inspired, and it's a journey through creativity, through a lot of the science, as well as the wonder of creativity. And I read this interesting chapter on how fear can either motivate us or stop us as creatives, either motivate us or stop us as creatives. Good morning, Blanca. Glad you're following along, making your path. And about our biggest, trying to get the lid back on here, our biggest challenge is, well, that just does not want to go back on there, is that fear of sharing, fear of acknowledging, fear of what we might find on the page, even more than fear of the journey or the process or the product, you know, there's the fear of getting started and not knowing what might appear. And so this is, for me, 
getting in touch with our own intuitive knowing, there's no better way to do that than through just simple play on the page because I'm not attached, right? I'm not attached to anything. All right, looking for some, see what we got going on in here. So I have this bright blue, just inexpensive craft paint. These are all so old, I'm happy to be using them up. We'll see what color blue that is and what it does. I'm just putting it again right on the page. I'm going to come in with a round brush. See what else is happening on this path. And that sometimes fear can be our greatest inspiration and be the source of extreme innovation. And he shared the story in the book of the, the smallpox vaccine and then ultimately the COVID vaccine as well. It's kind of a weird color. It doesn't really quite go with the rest of my palette, but it's probably all going to get painted over or covered up anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. But sometimes fear creates urgency, and that urgency can create new ideas as well. So it was an interesting perspective on creativity. But he shared this other study that was done about how hard it is for people to be alone with their thoughts. And they did a study where people were left alone in a quiet room with no input. And they could actually choose to shock themselves over sitting quietly with their thoughts. And more people chose to shock themselves than to sit quietly with their thoughts, which gets me really thinking about the power of mindfulness and how essential it is that we learn to just sit with our own thoughts. So this is a dioxazine purple. This is one of my favorite purples, and this is a heavy body acrylic, so it's a lot thicker, so it creates some really nice texture on the page. But I think these kind of abstract, playful pages really help me to be more fearless in my art making. They make me a better artist when it comes to painting something that I do care about the product at the end, whether I'm creating something for someone else or, you know, coming up with ideas for a class. There's always that twinge of fear and nervousness that arises when I'm creating something for public consumption and there's that you know, always voice in the back of my head, are they going to like it? Are they going to value it? And for these things in my art journaling in the morning, I don't care if other people like it or not. It's not why I'm here doing this. I'm here doing this because it's the introspection, it's the practice, it's the staying connected to that own intuitive voice, just following my own inner guidance. And the more in touch I am with my own inner guidance, the more access I have to my own creative ideas and my own inner sense of knowing. So I'm noticing that I'm sort of leaving this light path in the center here where that light is shining and there's some movement and activity, but things are starting to move to the edges of the page so that path is a little more clear. I'm also noticing that the page is feeling dark and mysterious. So there's some curiosity in the what's lingering at the edges of this page and just noticing that I'm really wanting to brighten this up and bring the light back because this feels like what's been sort of churning or buried un, uh, or left, you know, along the edges of not knowing. And when I come back to the 
intention and energy of the poem. So I've got my out of the way places of the heart where my thoughts never think to wander. And what I'm looking for, right, instead of the seduction of safety, I'm looking for that turmoil, the rise, the delight, the courage. Um, again, there's no destination on this path. There's only the spirit of adventure. So I painted in some of those darks, and now I want to really start to brighten this page up to just sort of capture the sentiment of O'Donohue's poem through my interpretation of that poem. And first, I'm going to get this pretty dry, so bear with me for just a second. All right, I think it's mostly dry. So if you're just joining me this morning, welcome. I'm doing another abstract, moody piece this morning in response to John O'Donohue's painting poem, sorry, for a new beginning. And I've got these sort of dark, moody colors going on, and now I'm ready to brighten that up a bit and add some lighter colors. So maybe even some of this. So I've got some yellow and some purple. I've been kind of obsessed with yellow and purple lately, complementary colors on the color palette. But again, just wanting to be able to bring some more light and bright to this. This one's all the way down at the end. Go. And I'm probably going to want some more white, but we'll see where we get to. Again, working with a very dry brush because this is fine paper. And I'm going to come in and start to brighten up around the edges of the path. Diego, go away, sweetie. Um, I don't necessarily want to lose some of that nice moody darkness around the edges but I want to notice and just feel into the energy of the path here because all that movement and exploration and sort of deep diving into my own inner knowing it's all important and it's all part of me but I want to have this lightness of the path in the center. And again, I'm just playing with paint, right? I'm just playing with paint. And this definitely feels right now like it's a big, lighten up this path. It's in that messy middle. And this path is feeling pretty straight, and paths don't tend to normally be that straight. I went for a beautiful walk in my neighborhood yesterday, and the grass was just starting to come out, and things are starting to green up a little bit. Maybe I'm just going to bring some of this light in. I don't know. I'm kind of wanting to just put lots of yellow over the page and just keep making a mess here. So I'm just trusting the process. This feels like one that's going to get gessoed over to calm it all down. And what I'm noticing is that, okay, I'm not loving what I'm putting down on the page right now. Not loving this kind of weird mix of colors, but I'm loving the movement and the energy of the page. 
Good morning, Marianne. Dreaming more in color, more aware of color in your dreams. I love that. Brilliant. Awesome. I'm running Color Coded Emotions live again on April 1st and 2nd. And so anybody that took it before, I'll be sending out an email today, is welcome to come and go through it again. Because, of course, every time I teach it, I try to make it better change it up but yes I also since then am feeling much more connected to, to color and I think I'm enjoying color more I'm, I'm thinking more about color so definitely a messy chaotic page and so that's a clue perhaps to how I'm feeling inside and I definitely was sharing with one of my girlfriends yesterday that related to my business I feel like I'm in a little bit of an existential crisis around you know always coming back to the who do I want to be when I grow up and what are the central themes that I want to express and so for me there's no mistake that this was the poem that showed up on my desk like whenever I get into these little bit of uh, I'm not quite sure where I'm going I need a new plan right and everything's fine like nothing's broken nothing's not working actually everything is working well um, we got our, our taxes from our accountant this morning and we owe a big chunk of money we have the money but you know it's always that like I feel that little bit of just things are stirring and noticing like what do I want to be different here and so I can feel some of the energy of that churning right some of the energy of that churning and the darks and the lights everything is kind of moving so still in that play still in the the play I love scrapers and I'm loving you can't see it on the video but I've got the the texture of those leaves that I stamped on there earlier kind of showing up through the paint in kind of a cool interesting way so I'm almost feeling some tree like energy here um, let's see if we can get that out of the glare a little bit so I've got a lot of texture happening a lot of movement happening wanting to maybe bring back the the path or is this going to be a tree so I'm just watching right I'm just absorbing the 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 magic of what's happening here on the page and the idea that I had when I started and where is it going and for me trees as I've talked about before have that sense of both the the groundedness and the stability of spreading their roots and also reaching for the skies which also feels you know the at spring new beginning time so I'm just kind of thinking where do I want to go next with this and I'm gonna cut this poem down a little bit because I know I'm gonna want the poem on the page somehow some way just trimming off all the extra sort of eyeballing it getting it more or less straight and that maybe gives me a sense of where I want to go with the page I love creating things that kind of flip up so it almost feels like maybe there's going to be something happening underneath here and that's going to get attached to the the page but right now what I'm feeling wants to come back is a lot of white and maybe some of those little smaller marks like I played with yesterday and maybe bringing that leafy pattern back as well along the, the edges of the poem 
So I am just looking for a different brush. Remember, changing the size of our brush. So if I want to bring back this idea, maybe, of a wandering path. Because that first path felt way too straight, right? And paths in our lives rarely end up being straight and direct. They do tend to sort of loop back in on themselves. And because I had such a mishmash of colors in there, those purples and yellows and that little touch of blue, I ended up creating kind of an interesting muddy page with still some pops of color. But I had to paint through all that mud to get back to what feels like, oh, there's the path again. There's the way forward. There's the light sort of rising up out of the, the murkiness of the back of that path. And sometimes when I'm painting through moods and awarenesses and curiosities around feelings that feel mixed up, it takes a lot of layers, right? Like yesterday's page really came together pre pretty quickly. Today feels like I'm having to dig a little deeper into some of the murkiness to kind of find that, that path and direction but that's starting to feel better. It's starting to feel lit up, like there's seeds of new beginnings happening on the page. And I'm totally okay getting paint on the back of that because it's going to get glued down anyway, but I don't want to get paint on her, so she's going to get added to this spread. Tomorrow I will do something with her on the page. Actually, that looks pretty cool too. Just having the poem on this black and white page. I also had fun. I couldn't stop painting after I stopped the video yesterday. So this was some of the black and white collage paper I started with that might make a fun background for the poem. So just leaving, giving myself some options, letting this page dry for the minute. Oh, I kind of like the, the black and the pink. So this one also has that, you know, pathy, pathy feel to it that feels kind of fun. And I'm also having fun just using up a lot of this these pages that I made in the found objects class. So interesting how the past here sort of mirror each other. So what feels fun about this one is I could actually even take my sewing machine and maybe stitch that onto the page. And then I can leave this page open or what if my figure is supposed to be the clarity rising out of the murk here. So you can see how I tend to just work so um, trying things out, right? There's nothing that I need to know here that I need to do here. This is play just for me, right? Play just for me, for where I'm at in the moment. So I'm just cutting this figure out. And what if she's coming up out of that path? Hmm. So now it feels like some of that swirliness might just swirl out and behind her. So remember, we're at the, the new moon energy today. So um, it's a great time for planting seeds. Yes, I love that pink. It is a 
golden high flow fluorescent rose pink so it's a super fun color and saying that then I'm wanting to bring maybe some of that pink over here maybe I'm gonna calm her hair down a little bit she must be sitting out in the wind with her hair blowing around I'm actually gonna cut that piece off as well so there's just something about the look on her face that really pulls me in. And because this has ended up getting sort of created as a spread here, or I wonder, what if this became a page? Huh, interesting. Okay, so I'm digging that. little bit of interest there so that's kind of fun and then I get to decide what am I doing with this page over here this messy page this page that felt like this is what I needed to paint today this is the sort of you know pretty piece right I could just cover all of that up and let it go but I'm feeling stubborn this morning and tenacious to wanting to know where is this path going and where is it taking me so that one's kind of fun to just think about adding to the book. But I think Judy is right that I'm going to want to bring some of those colors in. And I'm thinking I'm going to attach this on this side, but leave it open because I want to see all that yumminess behind. But maybe it's time to just make even more of a mess. So these high flow acrylics are fun. They do all kinds of interesting things. You can spray them with water and run them down the page. Again, I'm just sort of intuitively making the marks and putting them down on the page. And I now I have this pretty wet. And a heart is emerging on this page. Talk about new beginnings and things sort of rising up out of the chaos and the dark edges. And that just completely shifted the entire energy, shifted the entire energy of this piece by just adding the heart and adding the pink. I can still see all that work that was done before underneath and it just fascinates me how just one simple layer and one simple shape can change everything and bring the light and the life back so the poem is called for a new beginning by john o'donohue who's one of my most favorite poets he's an irish former priest and poet so Judy's suggestion to add the pink on there was perfect. And one of the things that I like to do when I have a wet page like that, so I'm grabbing another piece of the, so this was another page from Found Objects. And so I'm still looking for fun ways to use these and continue to add to them. And that pink on there is pretty wet. And so sometimes I blow dry it, but sometimes it's really fun to blot it. And then I get always something interesting happening. It's how I got the, the pink on this page. As well. So now I have more interest in this makes better collage paper this way as well. De nada. Blanca, you're welcome. And now I'm wanting to to brighten this up maybe with some some blue some of my favorite teal blue to come in here and continue so now it's feeling like there's many paths and all paths lead to my heart right many paths and all paths lead to my heart okay now that's interesting also she's just being very insistent that she wants to be on on the journey with me today so I'm just again trusting that right trusting that direction 
So I'm going to grab some of my favorite teal here. Oops. And I'm making a mess. Getting paint everywhere. And I may even come back with just a touch of that Payne's Gray again, just to create a little bit of contrast. And continuing to just bring in some of that light, maybe just continuing to accentuate that heart shape. I love finger painting. And again, just really loving the transformation of the page from that dark murkiness. So Judy, just that one word pink changed everything and brought it all back to life again. So thank you for that. just a little bit because that darkness lingers right and oftentimes the answers that we seek are in the the dark inner recesses of our own spirits our own soul and these abstract pieces what I love about, about them is there's always a transformational journey involved so this whole week may be about these abstract pieces. So I think that Payne's Gray just kind of pulls her back into the into the design a little bit. Once it's dry, it may need some yellow highlights in there as well. But it needs to be super, super dry for that. All right, so loving where this is going and thinking that I want to get her onto the page and then maybe even do some journal writing. Don't really care about those pearls there, so maybe I'm just going to paint her up a little bit so that I just create a, a different surface. Kind of almost more like that sort of silhouette feel. Definitely need some to bring back some of that yellow that was underneath down there. You see, I love when you press the, the papers on there and you get all these magical colors. In fact, let's take this one and see, add just a little bit more color to this page as well. Just helps to blot some of that up, get it a little bit dry, but then add some interest on this page as well. Hi, Georgia. Well, you guys are needy this morning. My two kitties are very busy. All right. So I'm going to hit this with the dryer. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow, and then I'm probably going to let it all get completely dry. And I will add her on there as a last step with some matte medium, but this is going to get to probably need to sit and dry for a while before I do that. This is definitely this Azo Yellow Deep by Amsterdam is one of my favorite, favorite yellows. All right.
I think it's I'm wanting that that sort of you know just brightness up around the edges of her and again it's that idea that all these paths lead back to center right all these paths lead back to center like that and maybe this is the the quote that needs to get written on here it says many paths lead to the same destination it doesn't matter how you get there and so this page was a great example of just taking me on a very crazy journey back to the center. And so all paths lead to center, right? All paths lead to center. I have so much fun with the mark making that I can definitely get really caught up in just adding the layers and layers of paint and then I end up painting over colors, coming back and bringing back more colors. You may want to bring back some more bursts of that pink again up at the top up there. And I'm just, right now, all I'm doing is using up the paint that's on my palette. All right, coming together. Again, the flow of energy is making me super happy. Once it's dry, she's going to get glued down. I'm going to add this, handwrite this quote on top of her. And this is going to end up being our poem page over here because I really want that poem to be in here. And I kind of like this, so I'm wondering if I want to trim that down and have it just be framed a little bit by this page. But I'm also thinking, because I do love this page, I could take my paper tape and add this page into the journal. So it's a nice way to extend a journal is to add pages to our journal as well. But again, everything is too wet at the moment to do that. So I think it's going to all need to just get nice and dry here. I'm going to do this one more time because I have so much paint on here and this is a fun way to sort of make sure that the same colors are on both pages of the spread even though I'm getting to those pages differently and that page just keeps getting more and more interesting the more that I do that so let me hit this with the dryer real quick I've got it super thick on there now, so I think it's going to take, take a while to dry. Yeah, it's going to, it needs to air dry for a while. But I'm pretty happy with how that came along. So I've got a white Posca marker, and I'm going to just add this quote right over the, the top of her here. And this may be a little wet still, too. says many paths lead to the same destination. It doesn't matter how you get there. So 
So a good reminder, right? A good reminder to just follow the paths, to follow the paths. Whether they cycle in, cycle out, no matter how windy they are, how long or short they are, but ultimately all the best, best, best paths lead us right back to ourselves. Okay, so I'm kind of digging this whole page here. Again, I'm going to let this get super, super dry, and then I will glue this onto the page, or maybe I might run it through my sewing machine and stitch it on there, and then I'm going to come back in with the paper tape, and I can use the paper tape to actually add this page right smack into my journal. So I'll probably finish that up later today when this is all dry, and then I will be able to share the, the final results tomorrow. But I think this is a good place to stop. There's part of me that just wants to sit here and keep playing. So I'm feeling that uh, creative energy just really bubbling up this morning. And it feels hard to stop. And I want to just stay in this energy of the heart. It's just opening, expansive, so it's all cycling in and out. All right, that feels better. That feels complete. Thank you, Yvonne. Good morning. Thank you for being here. As always, thank you everyone for joining me live. I'm Dr. Minette Riordan. This is Painting in Your PJs live with Minette. And today I was working inspired by the poem For a New Beginning by John O'Donohue, which is perfect for the season we're in. We're on the cusp of spring and the new moon, which are both times of new beginning. And I painted through this whole process of just kind of noticing all the murky, dark edges that are in and the, the, the murky paths and the many places that I've been that brought me back here to this place of just coming back to my own heart and remembering that many paths lead to the same destination. It doesn't matter how you get there. So again, thank you so much for joining me live. Please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this journey that encourages other people to come along and watch as well. Have a beautiful rest of your day, my friends. I will see you back here tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Mountain Time for another episode of Painting in Your PJs Live with Minette.